All right, everybody, let's talk a little bit about levels of evidence today. Um, just a little bit. So we've got um, four levels. Um, you know, if you had um, if you had the research class for undergrad here at Appalachian, you probably had. You know, this is going to sound very familiar, but. Um, and don't worry about the A's and B's, like just worry about level one, level two, level three, level four. So there are two kinds of level one articles. Um, the first kind is a systematic review. So a systematic review can be with or without a meta-analysis, right? So a meta-analysis is where you get results from several well-designed studies, sort of pull them all together as if it's one giant study, and then reanalyze them. So you can do a meta-analysis, um, but you don't have to. So a systematic review is going to be um, just that. Let me go backwards, actually. All right. Um, and these are important because they help to establish causality, which cannot be established with one study, right? So if we just have one study about a certain kind of therapy, right? Well, maybe it was the therapist who was really good, or maybe the place was really good, or maybe, you know, those clients happened to be um, special or unique in some way, which is why they made changes. Um, it's only with multiple studies that we can start to say, you know, the, the therapy is what's causing the change and not some other factors. Um, it also provides an estimate of the effectiveness of treatment. So it gives the effect size as far as not only does it work, but how much change on average are we going to be able to see with our clients. Um, it gives us increased statistical power due to an increase in, right, the n in research studies is going to be the number of participants, so the more participants we have, the more power there is um, to find true differences, um, and it also helps to determine future research needs, right, if we're pulling together everything that we know about um, a topic of therapy, then it also, you know, we're also able to see what we don't know about that topic. Um, good reviews are going to use an un, um, uh, should use an unbiased search and retrieval process and logical guidelines for including and excluding studies in the analysis, right? So let's go, let's go here, right? So this is um, study and treatment research. 1970 to 2005, part one, a systematic review incorporating trial quality assessment of behavioral, cognitive, and related approaches. So number one, if an article does not say that it's a systematic review, either in the title or the abstract, it's not a systematic review. Um, so we know right from the beginning, this is a level one article. Um, and the other way we know is we've got a method section and a results section. So multiple readers reviewed 162 articles published between 1970 and 2005 using a written data extraction instrument developed as a synthesis of existing standards and recommendations. Articles were then assessed. And then we've got a results section. Analysis found 39 articles that met the criteria. Right, so this is a, this is a research article um, so this is a systematic review, and that's going to be a level one. Um, of level one study is a randomized control trial. These are often required by the FDA for introduction of new drugs to the market. They usually require large N, but they don't always. Really, as long as you have over eight people in a study, it can still count as a randomized control trial, or, or eight people in each group. Um, some of these are going to include a double blind study, right? So it's going to be double blind, where if you have a drug study, right, the, the patient doesn't know if they're getting the drug or a placebo slash sugar pill, and 
the doctor doesn't know if you're getting the drug or a placebo sugar pill. So it's double blind in that way. Um, and then, you know, you're going to start off with just a small number of participants, and then, you know, if there's any kind of a problem, you can terminate the study before moving on to having larger participants. Um, randomized control trials are, are rare in CSD, although they're becoming more common. Um, sample sizes are often small. We don't have an FDA requirement prior to new treatments. Um, it's also very expensive because um, you'd have to hire all different kinds of speech therapists um, to provide therapy in a certain way um, and have you know all different kinds of clients involved um, and also you know because of a small sample size you know it can be hard to randomize and hard to randomize who's in your study hard to randomize between groups so um, a lot of times a lot of our studies aren't going to be level one but so here's an example of a level one study. So a randomized control trial to investigate the impact of the Lidcomb program on early stuttering in German-speaking preschoolers. Right. So again, if it's a level one, it's going to say so, you know, either in the title and or in the abstract. Right. So um, here we go. Forty-six German preschool children were randomly assigned to a weight contrast group or to an experimental group. Right, so um, it's going to tell us right there that it is, in fact, um, a level one study and a randomized control study. Right? Okay. Now, the next one is going to be a level two, which is a non randomized intervention study. So these are going to be group studies. Um, so it's going to be comparing one group versus another, or it, there might be one group of participants where you're comparing pre-test versus post-test. Um, so, and these can also include quasi-experiments with intact groups. Um, most of the intervention research in our field is here or lower. Again, lack of randomization, use of already formed groups, subject selection bias, small ends, lack of blinding, right? So all of these things are going to be a level two, right? So level two is going to look like this. Let me see if I can make this a little bit larger here. Uh -oh. um, okay, it's a program stuttering therapy for children, comparison of four programs, right? So four different programs. Um, were carried out by eight public school clinicians with 16 children in their respective schools. All programs produce important improvement in speech fluency. Right, so there's no mention of randomization, right? So let's go to the method, sex, and subjects. We've got 16 school age kids who stuttered. Um, these children were selected for subjects from a pool of 23 children because they met the following selection criteria. Right, so they talk about the kind of operationally defined who was in here. Um, the last criterion was determined by having the subject read. Um, the subjects were organized into four groups of four children each, according to stutter severity, location, and age. Right, so there's no randomization here, right? Um, so they kind of put people together. Um, to try to make groups equal, but it's not randomized. So we've got a group study, but it's not randomized. All right, so that's going to be a level two study. All right. All right. Level three, we can have a non experimental study. Um, so with a non experimental study, let me pull that up so it's a little bigger. All right. So here the big thing to know is, right, um, there's no um, there's no variable being manipulated by the researcher. So you're kind of, you could follow people over time. Um, let's say people have had a middle ear infection, and then you're trying to see, you know, how many of those kids versus kids who don't have a middle ear infection will end up with a language disorder. Right, but there's no intervention. Um, the researcher's not intervening in any way. 
So that's the first kind of level three, is a non-experimental study. The other kind of level three is going to be an intervention study, but not a group study. So either case studies or single subject designs. So these investigate participants in detail and compare their profile to either typical cases or just overall. Um, and these may be experimental or, or non-experimental. But So the important thing here is um, if you have a single subject design, it's going to be a level three. It doesn't matter if it's experimental or not. Um, as soon as we get a um, case study, single study design, right? So here we've got four um, families with a preschooler who stutters, right? But it's not a group. You're not comparing one group to another, or you're not comparing pretest scores on average for a group versus pro versus post test scores on average for a group. We just have four families, four kids. Um, and we're going to look at their change over time. So it is intervention, right? We're giving them the lid cone therapy for early stuttering. However, um, because it's a it's a, a case study or single study design, it falls into a level three. Okay. Level four: expert opinion and observation. So a lot of our information. Um, so most of what we're going to find on ASHA, just the ASHA web page. So not not articles that we find, but just sort of information on the ASHA web page. So our is it childhood fluency disorders, right? And here we just have information. So this is what stuttering is. Um, this is what cluttering is, right? And then it gives information, right? This is going to be level four. So we get information about the topic, right? But there's no, we don't really have, we don't have results, right? It's not a study. It's just saying, hey, you know, um, here's what we know, here's what we believe about childhood fluency disorders, right? Now, you can also have an article, right? So methods in stuttering therapy for desensitizing parents of children who stutter right so the aim of the study was to describe a range of methods used in stuttering therapy right so we're just describing things um, so now we have to figure out is this a level one is this a systematic review or is this a level four so is it clinical tutorial? It's going to explore the rationale and benefits of therapies. Research evidence will be presented about the impact of child stuttering. The article will then focus on methods of desensitizing parents. Um, and then conclusion. So there's no results section. So this isn't, this isn't an actual study. It's just saying, hey, this is what we do. This is what we think is important. Um, so this then becomes a level four research study. Okay. Um, so those are the four kinds. And remember, we're really, so for our, for what we're doing this semester, right, with our paper, um, levels one through three are going to fall under the, um, the, the best available research evidence, right, are going to be levels one to three. Um, level four sources are going to fall under clinical expertise and expert opinion, right, because it's just saying, hey, here's what the disorder is, here are some ideas about how to treat it, but they're not actual research articles. All right, so for our, what we're doing this semester, Right, level four articles are going to fall under clinical expertise, expert opinion. Level one to three articles are going to fall under best available research evidence. Hope that makes sense. Um, shoot me some emails um, if you have questions. All right, thanks everybody.